All we're trying to do here is build a foundation that the rest of this is going to stand on. Coming from common experience, we're coming from the point where we uh, understand the basic structure of our world, and then we're going to focus this very quickly into the understanding that we have with the human body. So you're going to see me summarize over and over and again just to kind of keep things straight here. You probably don't have to write down these summary things. You look at them and you've already got these things in the rest of your notes. I'll just read through it real quickly. All right, the building blocks of life are atoms and molecules. Organic molecules build living structures. Structure determines function. All life is constructed in a cellular format. The human body's actors are its cells. I, I can't really emphasize this enough. You're going to hear me say it over and over again. You know what? I am alive because my cells are alive. I think of myself as one thing, but I'm really, if you come right, if you want to look at me from, a, from an anatomical perspective, I am a society of cells. That's who I am. All those cells functioning together are me. Everything I do is a cellular process. Everything about me is a cellular process. Now, it's a huge, complex, coordinated bunch of cellular processes. But it all comes back to the cells. The cells do the jobs. If you look at all the work that gets done in San Bernardino, I say, well, San Bernardino is doing it. Yes, but it's all the individual living things in San Bernardino doing the jobs, doing the things that get done. Or look at a big corporation. You say some big corporation does what it does. Well, it's you know hundreds and thousands of people working together, contributing their own little parts to that that make the whole thing work. That's how I am. Are you able to follow this? All right. I got the idea here. Okay, so let's let's make the picture that we started in one of our earlier lectures, let's make this picture more complete now, right? The atoms, we said, build the molecules. The molecules were built into the macromolecules. These then are built or structured into what we call organelles, and those organelles all together make up the cell. And just think for a minute. This is probably obvious, but cells are so much more than just a collection of atoms, aren't they? It's how those atoms are put together. Put together here. These are put together here. We become more and more complex as we move up this ladder of structure. Right? Now, what happens when we get this complex? Well, now we have something that lives. If you say something is alive or you say something isn't alive, what do you mean by that? We're going to talk about that more. But you want to recognize that something happens here to, when this complexity reaches the level of a cell. When we get enough of this stuff organized, we come to this organized state that this thing now has the properties that we call living. Atoms are not alive. Molecules are not alive. Macromolecules are not alive. Organelles are not alive. But when you get the right combination of all of this functioning together, in an organized way, you now have something that lives. And we'll explore that a little bit more as we go on. We okay there? Questions, please. Anything I need to restate or you need to go over? Now we're gonna we're gonna build, let's build from that cellular foundation. Right? We built our way up to cells. Let's build beyond the cells now. Okay? We know that cells are the functional units of my life. These are the actors in my life. They get built into what we call tissues. As I look at my human body, I can see muscle tissue, 
and the tissues of my skin and my various organs. There's many, many different tissues in my body. What are tissues but cooperative structures of cells? Cells are organized into tissues. Right? Tissues are then organized into organs. Those organs are built into organ systems. And then the top of the pile is the organism. Organism is just a biological word that means a living thing. An organism is a living thing, a microbe. Uh, a little bacteria is an organism. A, a goat is an organism. A tree is an organism. Is it alive? Is it a living unit? It's an organism. That's just a, a general word. Now, of course, the or specific organism we're going to be talking about is, of course, the human. Um, if you have your textbook, if you had a chance to read through the first chapter or so, which is pretty much where we are here, right? there's this image that sort of goes through those what we call levels of organization, starting right here at the atom and the molecule level and building up to the cell. Now here, the cell they use is a smooth muscle cell. You're going to learn later this semester that there are three types of muscle in the human body. Each one is built out of different kinds of cells. These smooth muscle cells build smooth muscle tissue. And what is this? It's just a collection of cells that function together as what we would call a tissue. Now, you're going to find smooth muscle all over the place. Their example here is the urinary bladder. One of the layers of tissue in the urinary bladder is a layer of muscle. There's an, sort of an outside layer of tissue that keeps it distinct and hold and, and tough. There's sort of a tough outer covering. There's a layer of muscle to squeeze the urine out. Right? That can stretch, but then it can squeeze the urine out of it. There's a lining in here that doesn't let the urine leak back into your human body. So there are a variety of tissues here, one of which is this muscle tissue. So an organ is a combination of tissues, tissues organized in such a way to perform an activity for us. Have you been thankful for your urinary bladder today? If you haven't, just pause for a moment and be grateful. Okay? What would be the alternative? What if you didn't have a bladder? What would life be like? Very wet, right? You'd be leaking all day long, right? Your kidneys are producing urine 24-7. Every moment of every day, your kidneys are removing urinary waste products from your bloodstream. And if you didn't have some place to collect it, it would just have to drip, drip, drip out of you all the time. Pretty nice, that urinary bladder, huh? Yeah. That's just one organ, though, in a whole system of organs that we would call the urinary system, which would include those kidneys that do the filtering, some tubes called ureters that carry that urine to the bladder, the bladder for storage, so you only have to eliminate it a couple of times a day, and then a tube leading out of the body, the urethra. Those four organs together, or five, counting the two kidneys, are in what we call a system of organs, an organ system, called the urinary system. And then there are 11 organ systems then that make up the whole structure of our human body. So... Level upon level. At each level, things become more complex. At each level, new abilities, new properties, new characteristics appear. This, this is more than just some muscle stuff. It's got many, many tissues in it. This is more than just a, a collection of cells. It is a collection of cells, but it has greater function when I unite all those cells together. I can start right at that atomic level and work my way all the way up. And I should understand and be able to, to name these levels and sort of understand what is found at each point. Now, the list, you've got my list in your handout. Probably the only difference is right here. Um, when you get beyond the molecules, I want to insert the word organelles. In your textbook, they don't have that 
sort of organelle level here, but there is, you should have the concept that these molecules build themselves into organelles. The organelles then build themselves into the cells, cells into tissues, tissues into organs, organ system, and the organism. Now, you know you're going to see some questions on this, right, when you get to the exam. Want to make sure that you've got a good handle on this. So this is going to be the, the sort of the basis for our study. This is sort of the structural framework that you and I are looking at. When we want to come back and kind of organize what it is we want to understand and think and know, we come back to this hierarchy. I, I want to sort of summarize and give you a few insights here. Um, play a little game with me here. Here's, here's a fish tank, right? I want to do something interesting with you. I want you to imagine a fish tank. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill it full of water. This is about maybe 20, 25 gallons. I'm going to fill it full of water. I'm going to go over to the chemistry building over here and go into their storeroom. And I'm going to pull out all of the other elements that you would find in a human body. A bunch of calcium, some carbon, um, some phosphorus. I'm going to pull out all of the elements and I'm going to put them in this fish tank, kind of mix them up so there's a big murky mass of stuff, right? Now, Basically, what we're saying here is all the elements, all of the stuff in a human body is here. Now, compare what's in that fish tank to a human body. All the materials in the human body are here. All the materials in a human body are here. Right? What is the difference between these two? There's more structure here. Where did that structure come from? What's the key word here? Yeah. I want, I want you to just think of the word organization. Okay? This is organized. This is not. Right? Now just think about your own human body for a minute. You are organized dirt. Right? Isn't that it? You are made out of the same stuff that the universe is made out of. There's no special substance in you at an atomic elemental level. If I take a human body and I cremate it, I take it right back to its elemental stuff. It's not what it is. It's how it's organized. Organization is the key word here. I always like to extend this a little bit. Things in life that are successful are organized. My human body is successful because of its organization. Simple, basic, elemental stuff, highly organized is great success. Do you know that you have with you the most highly organized thing in the universe? that we know of? What object do you have with you that is the most highly organized, most highly successful object that we know of in the universe? What is it? That's right, your human brain, right here. You've got about three pounds of custard right here between your ears that is the most highly organized set of stuff. And look at the capabilities that you have. Look at the wonderful achievements and things that people can do with this custard. It's amazing stuff. And it's all due to its organization. One way to describe death is to say disorganization. If parts of you become disorganized, you can die. This is really the key to everything we're doing here. You can take this and apply it all over the place. If you're organized financially, you're probably successful financially. If you're an organized student, you're going to be successful as a student. 
You know, we, you can apply this all over the place. Organization is one of these principles in life that creates success. If you're not yet an organized student, you need to become one. One of the great things about organization is that everybody can do it their own way. But you have to do it. You can't just not know where your notes are. You can't not know where your handouts are. You can't know what you didn't study and what you did study. You have to know what is what, and you have to be able to find and handle. You've got to find a way, whether it's three-hole punching things and getting dividers and putting it into a binder or getting some file folders and putting certain things in file folders, whatever it is. You want to be a good student? You want to be successful? Follow the lead of your human body. Your human body is successful because it's organized. Things that that create disorganization in your body are things like diseases and, and syndromes and all sorts of things that disrupt the organization of the human body. If you're going to go into medical work, this is what you're going to be dealing with. You're going to be dealing with the disorganization of cells in people's human bodies for whatever reasons. And I think it's also helpful to think of these levels and where we're going to be as we study human anatomy and later as you study human physiology. Guess which of these levels we spend most of our time on in here? Yeah, 90% of our study time is spent here, isn't it? We're going to mostly be dealing with the stuff that we can see. We're going to talk about cells. We've just talked about organelles and cells. We're going to do a little bit of more of this today. And then we're going to just kind of leave this behind, and we're going to be working up here most of the time in this class. Okay? I will, I will come back to cells again and again and again because they're the actors. They're where all the rest of this comes from. So we're going to keep talking about them. Where are you going to be in physiology? Where is everything happening? Right here, right? 90% of your time is going to be spent here at the cellular molecular level. Can you see why chemistry makes people successful in physiology? Because this, these are the topics that you're going to be dealing with. You're going to be looking at what is happening on a cellular level. These are the actors. This is where the function is. Now it expresses itself up through all the other levels, but it's primary focus is where it's happening right there. The cells, the organelles, and those kinds of things. Now also, you know, think what parts of this are living? What, part, what parts of this are living? Cells are alive, right? Organelles are not alive, molecules are not alive, atoms are not alive. Cells, tissues, organs, these are all elements that have properties of life.